Hi everyone, today what we're going to be doing in lab is recrystallizing some compounds that have impurities in them. And so today what I'm going to do is recrystallize a sample of phthalic acid. I have inside this Erlenmeyer flask about a gram of phthalic acid, but this phthalic acid is not the purest. It's got some kind of impurity trapped inside the crystal structure. So in order to get rid of that impurity, what I need to do is dissolve everything in here and then find a way to precipitate only the pure phthalic acid compound. The best way to do that is uh, to dissolve everything that's in here in a very hot solvent. So what that's going to allow me to do is create a saturated hot solution of phthalic acid. Um, but because it's only a small amount of impurity, that impurity itself is not going to be saturated. Then, once I've got everything dissolved, I'm going to stop heating it and I'm going to allow the solution to cool. As it cools, the solvent can't hold on to the same amount of phthalic acid and so the phthalic acid starts to solidify. The slower you do this process, the finer um, the phthalic acid crystals will be or the crystals of whatever it is you're trying to recrystallize and the purer your crystals will be because what we're doing is we're relying on a principle called exclusion. And that principle states that when you have a mixture of compounds and you're recrystallizing one of them, when the molecules are forming their solid network, the crystalline structure, if you do it slowly enough, any impurities that are floating around in the solution are going to basically be pushed away as you form, you know, one phthalic acid molecule solidifies and then another one is going to solidify on top of it. The way this will turn out to be pure is if as that's happening you're not trapping those impurities in between the molecules. So the slower you allow this process to happen, the more time you give those molecules to kind of diffuse out and allow the phthalic acid crystals to really form on each other and not trap any impurities in. So we are going to do exactly that. We are going to dissolve the phthalic acid in very hot water. We're going to create a saturated solution of it. Then as it cools down, it becomes super saturated, and so the phthalic acid will start to crystallize out. We're going to do this very slowly. We're going to allow it to come to room temperature. Then we're going to make it even colder to try and get as much of that phthalic acid out as we can. We're going to put it in a nice bath. When we've gotten as much out as possible, um, hopefully that's nice pure phthalic acid. Um, hopefully the crystals will look nice and pretty versus right now. Uh, right now this is just kind of a powdery material. They're not really nice crystals. Um, so hopefully we'll start to see some really nice looking crystals as this starts to recrystallize. And then the next step is going to be isolating those crystals, getting the, um, the phthalic acid that solidified away from the water that we used as a solvent that has the impurities trapped inside it. So what I am doing right now is just waiting for my water to heat up. It is currently at 76 degrees, 78 degrees. Um, I want this to be as close to boiling as possible. So I'm just going to let it heat up for another 10 degrees. I'm going to try to get it up to between 90 and 95 to do the recrystallization. And then we'll be good to go. Um, so. I will start this video again once it is up to temperature. Okay, so my water bath is now at 90 degrees and you can see there are some bubbles forming um, around my boiling chips. Please do not forget you should always use some kind of boiling chip or boiling stone to allow these bubbles to form when you approach the boiling point. So inside the water I do have some boiling chips, that's where those larger bubbles are forming, but it's not at a rapid boil, so this is good. Um, I have my solid in the Erlenmeyer flask and um, two things, um, because I'm going to be adding a liquid to it that is nearly boiling, um, I need to have something for those bubbles to form inside this flask as well. Um, instead of boiling chips, which could add an impurity to my solid, I am instead going to use what we call a boiling stick. It is just a wooden applicator stick. Um, so I'm just going to drop that right into my flask. The other thing I'm going to be careful to do 
is not leave the Erlenmeyer flask with a solid in it sitting on the hot plate. And the reason for this, if I zoom out a little bit, um, even though I have the water at about 90 degrees, the hot plate itself is set quite high. Um, it's hard to read that. It's 265 degrees, so the top of this hot plate at 265 degrees is actually hot enough to melt my phthalic acid. I want to make sure that doesn't happen. What I'm trying to do, to do is dissolve the phthalic acid in the water, not melt it. Um, that is called oiling out, and once you melt it, it's actually very difficult for your solid sometimes to go um, up and be dissolved into the solvent that you're adding. So I am not gonna put this on the hot plate until I've added a little bit of the water. And when it is heating up on the hot plate, I'm gonna keep it swirling. And the other thing, I just wanna show you this really quickly. The first time I pipette this water, um, as it's cooling down, it is probably going to spurt out of the pipette. Actually, it's not doing it this time. Of course, oh, there it goes. Um, so it is starting to spurt out of the pipette as it cools down. Um, whenever you are pipetting something that is at a different temperature than room temperature, it's always a good idea to fill it up and empty it back out a few times just to allow the pipette to come up to the same temperature as the liquid so it doesn't shoot out like that. So I'm going to add a few mils of that very, very hot water. Um, so just a couple of pipettefuls. And then what I'm gonna do is start swirling it on the hot plate. I'm going to try to keep this in constant motion. And that fog is gonna go away eventually. Um, and I'm just gonna keep adding the water slowly while keeping it heated until all of the phthalic acid has dissolved. So there is still solid in there. Um, I'm gonna make sure that this does get up and stays hot because again, the hotter I make it, the more is gonna dissolve right now, um, which means when I cool it down, I will get a better recovery rate. So I'm just gonna kinda keep going. Sorry if my arm gets in the way sometimes. It's kind of awkward to do this with the camera. This will switch to my left hand. A little bit more. Once you have a little bit of water in here, you can stop swirling it for a little bit on the hot plate. You just wanna make sure that you've got enough water in there that the solid is not going to melt. Don't forget the water can't get any hotter than 100 degrees and phthalic acid's boiling point is well over 100 degrees. But don't leave it too long just in case. And so you can see there is still a fair amount of solid sitting down in the bottom of the flask right there, so we're just going to keep adding until it finally all dissolves. There is still solid, solid in there, but it is certainly a lot less than there was before. Um, so I'm starting to get there. Um, see, there's only a little tiny bit left, but we do need to get absolutely all of it to dissolve. You want to be certain that you are not adding more solvent than you need to, so add it slowly. Only do about a pipette at a time. Make sure you're swirling in between and giving it a chance to dissolve. It does sometimes take some time for solids to dissolve, not just heat. Almost. 
Unfortunately, you do sometimes get to the point when you're down in the kind of last little bit of solid where it's difficult to tell if it's solid or if it's bubbles. And it looks like I am now fully dissolved. Um, it has completely dissolved. The only thing that's left down there are actually little air bubbles that I can free up right now. And so that is a nice solid free flask. This little stuff that you see down here, those are just air bubbles. So now what we have to do, we have our nice super saturated solution. Um, we need to let that cool down so that we can decrease the solubility. And so it is as simple as putting it down on the bench. Um, it is always a good idea at first when you have a flask that is very, very cold, or I'm sorry, very, very hot, to put it down on some paper towels because the bench surface is at room temperature and um, you can thermally shock the glass if you have very hot glass touching a cold surface or vice versa if you put a very cold or refrigerated piece of glassware onto a very hot surface then you can actually crack the glassware. So I'm going to leave it on this paper towel for a couple of minutes and then I'll take the paper towel away and we're just going to let this cool to room temperature and I am going to speed up that process as well so that I'm not making you watch 30 minutes of basically paint drying. And of course don't forget to take out the applicator stick. So I'm not going to leave that in the flask. You do want to leave this undisturbed. Um, the more you move it around or jostle it, the um, basically worse your crystals are going to be. They're not going to grow nice and um, uh, neatly. Uh, those molecules will start to crash out. So you do want to just leave it to slowly cool down on its own. Don't touch it. Answer some questions in your workbook or wash some glassware. Get your recrystallization setup going. Um, just leave it be. Okay, so that is at room temperature now, and you can see, probably you got to watch all of those crystals form. Um, and so that's really nice, and you can see they really are much bigger than those original kind of uh, really, really tiny crystals that we started with. Um, so now what we're going to do is make it even colder so that we can solidify even more of that phthalic acid out, and the way that we're going to do that is by putting it into an ice water bath. Okay, so what I have here is a nice ice water bath. Um, so this is a mixture of ice and water. You never want to cool something using just solid ice. You need some liquid in there because that's going to make a better surface contact. Um, every piece of this flask that is immersed in the water is going to um, have heat transfer going on because it's touching the cold water versus the solid ice would leave a lot of gaps where you don't really have anything cold touching the flask. So what I'm going to do is leave this sitting in here for about 15 minutes. At that point, it's going to be just about as cold as I can get it. And then I will come back and we will set up the vacuum filtration in the next video. Okay, so now this has been on ice for about 15 or 20 minutes. It is nice and cold. And so you can see I've got quite a bit of solid now in the flask and so now what I have to do is isolate that solid get it away from the solvent the water and the impurities that are hopefully in the water not trapped in the crystal structure the way that we're going to do that is through vacuum filtration and I am going to set up a vacuum filtration in the next video so make sure you pull that one up and watch it